is not well in this New Hampshire town. How can this be in our little quiet town in Richmond? Some say these traditionalist Catholics are good neighbors, but others are certain they are a sinister cult. Very fanatical. Their founder, the so-called hate priest, notoriously anti-Semitic. Are they? I'm not interested in ask, answering that question. Now, an uneasy Richmond faces a power struggle over its future. It doesn't take a, you know, a brain surgeon to figure out that they could take over the town. A town divided, coming up next on Chronicle. It seems too quiet to be a war zone. Downtown Richmond, New Hampshire, population about 1,200. Just a general store, and for excitement, a blinking light. Here, routes 32 and 119 cross and divide the town. But there is a deeper and more powerful division in this little town, and in a sense, it too centers on a cross. How big is this facility going to be? It's a little over 10,000 square feet. Brother Maximilian Marie of the St. Benedict Center is showing me the site where his group wants to build a new school and church. So that the school can grow, so that we can have more chapel goers on Sundays. The St. Benedict Center is home to a religious order, the Slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. They have met resistance to their expansion plans. But what began as a routine zoning dispute has taken an unexpected turn into something larger, darker, and more troubling. I really think they're more cult-like than they are a church. Melanson visited the St. Benedict Center, or SBC, on several occasions. What he found disturbed him. And what struck me, there's a real fixation with the Jewish people. I don't know, it's, it, it's like they're so preoccupied with the Jews that um, it's just unbelievable. I, I, they can't seem to move beyond that. Before the expansion plans, all Russell and Victoria Provost knew about the monastery on the hill was that it offered a Latin mass, and its churchgoers tended to have large, well-behaved families. Now, they were stumbling on some information that made them very uneasy. I saw the Boston Globe article where the founder uh, up there uh, had denied the Holocaust. I said, yeah, how could this be? In 2004, the Boston Globe quoted the center's founder, Doug Bursaw, seen here in a Chronicle segment from 1991, as saying of the Holocaust, quote, it's all a fraud. Six million people, it didn't occur. Bursaw declined to be interviewed for this program. Are we concerned about the Jews? Well. I'm concerned about the Jews, I'm concerned about the Presbyterians, I'm concerned about the Methodists, the Hindus, the Muslims. All of those are people who are candidates for conversion to the Catholic Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. Brother Andre Marie is prior of the slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Like other traditionalist Catholics, the slaves reject the liberalized reforms of Vatican II. They hold firm to the belief that Catholicism is the one true church. Brother Andre denies the slaves are anti-Semitic. It never sounds nice when you tell somebody you have the wrong religion. Um, in our modern milieu, it's sort of taken as rude now. Yet Brother Andre himself is on record as saying that Jews, quote, undermine public morality. Can you just explain what that means, that Jews undermine public morality? What does that mean? Let me be very frank. I'm not interested in ask, answering that question. That's a very, very complex question. Then, last winter, the Intelligence Report, a magazine put out by the Southern Poverty Law Center, published its Dirty Dozen, a list of the top traditionalist Catholic hate groups in the country. Among them, the slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in Richmond, New Hampshire. What had long been a scattering of internet factoid and rumor was becoming harder to ignore. How can this be, you know, a little quiet town in Richmond, you know, two national publications are, are, are claiming that, you know, they're a hate group and uh, that uh, they deny the Holocaust. 
And for you too, Vicki, was it a shocking discovery? I actually started to cry and I couldn't stop crying because I just could not believe that this was happening here in what I, what I call home. Somehow the Catholic faith curled up shamefully because we, we didn't want to face opposition. We, uh, we, we lost the point of what we were here for and what the church was here for. The central tenet of the slaves is that there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. This is to go back to our Lord's great mandate. You know, he didn't say go out and dialogue with cultures. He didn't say go out and be palsy-wowsy with everybody and tell them it doesn't matter what they believe. No, our Lord's words that I quoted were pretty precise. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who believes not will be condemned. But the idea that salvation is only available to Catholics has not been church teaching for a long time. This whole idea that unless you're a baptized Roman Catholic, you're damned, you can't be saved. Again, the church doesn't teach that. No salvation outside the church has been the central tenet of the slaves since their founding in 1949 by Father Leonard Feeney. Father Feeney is our founder and we love him dearly as our founder. Feeney, a charismatic Jesuit, felt the Catholic Church was going soft, compromising itself in an attempt to fit in more comfortably in a changing world. He became widely known for his weekly rallies on Boston Common in the 1950s. Increasingly strident and anti-Semitic, Feeney gained a national reputation as the hate priest. Feeney would start right in and, and just turn viciously on people and say, I damn you into the deepest pits of hell from the bottom of my priesthood. I curse you, you Castigated uh, non-Catholics of every type. And uh, there were riot scenes he down there. We pick on people in the crowd and, and call them names. I, I curse you, you Christ-killing Jews, you filthy little sheenies. I spit on you. Father Frank Sullivan of Boston College points out that Feeney was excommunicated for disobedience not his beliefs, many of which still live on with his followers. This is a quote from Father Feeney's publication called The Point. Jews as an organized force are the implacable declared enemies of Christianity, of its tenets, its traditions, its moral code, its very culture. Do you believe that? As I said, our interest in the Jews is the same as our interest in Methodists, Presbyterians, um, Hindus, Muslims, to bring them to the true faith. That is our interest. But if Father Feeney is your hero, do you repudiate what he said here? Did he say this at a different time? Is this wrong? I think you're getting the idea that, um, that what we really hold is that somehow um, Jews as Jews are bad people. Our interest in the Jews is to bring them to the true faith. Do you believe in the Holocaust, that the Holocaust actually exists? That's not our issue. I'm no historian. I'm not, I'm not capable of speaking to the, to the, to the issue of the Holocaust, uh, so all the different subtleties there. So you don't know whether it happened? Did Jewish people die in World War II? Absolutely. Yes. Did six million people die? I don't know. I'm not an historian. Reluctance to comment on the Holocaust aside, at least one member of the church flatly denies ever hearing anti-Semitic remarks from the pulpit or from the teachers of her ten children. And I think I'm astute enough that I would pick up a hypocrisy, that they were claiming to be devout followers of our Lord and at the same time preaching horrible things about other people. Those two just don't go together. And the fact that I'm raising children, and I'm so careful to raise them in a Catholic atmosphere, the idea that I would open them up to hateful things, that would be a shameful thing. Dana Taylor, a longtime selectman, is now Richmond's road agent. He thinks the St. Benedict Center fits in a whole lot better up here than some of its more liberal-minded critics. Now we're, it's full of all kinds of people come up from the Cape, and they come up from... New York and they come from here and there and they try and bring their way of life with them. They um, are great neighbors and while I don't agree with all their doctrinal points, um, we get along very well. A bishop in the local Mormon church, Tom Tagg, says he's never seen any evidence of intolerance from his neighbors. 
In many ways, the issues at play here in Richmond are an old story, touching on fundamental concepts such as freedom of speech, religious tolerance, and property rights. But there is a decidedly 21st century twist to this tale. Perhaps most unsettling to critics of the St. Benedict Center is that church members have begun taking positions in town government. All those in favor of amending it, please say aye. Aye. The town moderator, for example, is Doug Bursaw, the same Doug Bursaw who called the Holocaust a fraud and once referred to Jews as the synagogue of Satan. His election was a shock to Betty Jose and others not part of the SBC voting bloc. It was stunning because no one knew he was running. It was a secret write-in campaign. Another church member, Steve Boscarino, is town tax collector. He wrote a letter to the Keene Sentinel recently equating public schools with communism, saying they brainwash kids to be anti-God, anti-American, anti-life, anti-chastity, anti-heterosexual, and anti-morals. Boscarino would not return our calls. Betty Jose, who has two children, one with disabilities, is convinced the SBC is out to destroy the public schools. I started to get a little worried when I saw them show up at the school warrant meetings in huge numbers. Like everyone from their community would show up and I thought, wait a minute, you have your own school. <laughs> Why are you showing up here and voting down the school that my kids rely on? For Russ and Vicki Provost, the decision to stay is a decision to stand up for what is right. Getting back to the Holocaust thing, I cannot understand for the life of me, and I'm, you know, 60 years old, how that ever happened, how people never stood up, how they didn't, you know, say something to stop this from happening. And the same thing from here. I feel that I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say what's happening here. And like it or not, you know, whether we're newcomers or not, what we're saying is the truth. But charges of intolerance are flying in both directions. There are some folks who have a, a visceral, visceral um, dislike of our principles. Brother Andre Marie scoffs at the notion that the slaves want to make Richmond a Catholic enclave. It's not nearly ambitious enough. We have a duty not to make Richmond Catholic, not to make New Hampshire Catholic. You know, God thinks big. We have a duty to make the world Catholic by way of preaching the true faith, but there is that element of free will. And those who accept it, accept it. Those who reject it, reject it. And it is that element of free will which allows people to choose what they see when looking at the slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. What do you say to people who call you a cult? No. What more is there to say? And if I accuse you of being a ninja assassin and you happen not to be one, and somebody asks you if you're one, uh, what's the proper answer? No.